let's talk Ray Fisher. Yay. Oh, man. This is the story that just really keeps on giving. And I have, like I said, guys, uh, long before we were doing this podcast, um, people had been reporting on uh, the Ray Fisher, Joss Whedon stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the kind of... I almost feel bad because it's like it's de- it's totally just Hollywood drama. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I really feel like both of these, uh, both the actor and Joss Whedon, aren't doing themselves any favor by carrying this on. Like Whedon is getting his comeuppance for being what apparently seems to be like a bad dude for a lot of years, uh, while wearing the mask of being somebody who's uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a male feminist, <laughs> or, you know. That's scary. Yeah. Uh, not, not, uh, and when we say bad dude, we just mean like just kind of a dick, right? Mm-hmm. He's, he treated people with a lot of, di- with disrespect and then, mm-hmm. and then he makes excuses the whole way. But Fisher isn't doing his career any favors with the way yep. he's, uh, with the way he's going about this. And mm-hmm. I understand that he feels like uh, this is his story to tell and he wants to do that. But, you know, if he wants to keep acting in the industry, uh, I think a little discretion might go a long way. Uh, not everything is activism. Not everything is uh, uh, the hill you need to die on, especially if you want to say they, they actually believe what they say mm-hmm. about how art changes the world and that he can change the world through his performances. Wouldn't he be better off uh, working to get as many good roles as he can in changing the world through his art? Rather than his, uh, you know, calling out one crappy studio director and executive and expecting that to change everything. Well, then you have to teach your directors and your Hollywood actors to shut up. Yeah, learn uh, how to shut up. They like, haven't. They mm-hmm. haven't learned that. Uh, uh, but at the same time, Whedon deserves all he gets mm-hmm. because he treated people like I. Like, like there really is no winner. Lo- there's no winner here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says if Whedon had hoped that his recent interview with New York Magazine would allow him to put across his side of the story against accusations of misconduct on movie and TV sets since the 90s, his words seem to have only strengthened the support for those who were receiving on the receiving end of his actions, including Justice League star Ray Fisher. Mm-hmm. The actor has once again become the subject of the hashtag I stand with Ray Fisher that at one point became trending topic bigger than the new trailer for Marvel's Moon Knight. Fisher himself, like many, uh, like other actors mentioned in the article, made a post on his Twitter account in response to the comments. Uh, looks like Joss got to direct an endgame after all. Rather than address all the lies and buffoonery today, I will be celebrating the legacy of Reverend Martin Luther King. Tomorrow the work continues. And then he does hashtag A uh, greater than E, which is uh, accountability over entertainment. Mm-hmm. The, cel- the sanctimony and self-righteousness <laughs> and self-importance just drips yep. from every word that comes from this. I'm sorry. I don't know the guy. I don't know the actor. But it's just he, it comes off as so goddamn self-important. Uh, That's Ray how F- Hollywood is now. Ray Fisher played the S- Victor Stone cyborg in uh, Justice League, although his appearance in the original 2017 release uh, of the movie was much less than originally planned by Zack Snyder, thanks to cuts made by Whedon. In 2020, Fisher took a huge ste- took the huge step of publicly accusing Whedon and others for racist and abusive behavior while filming on the superhero movie. Uh, Joss Whedon has worked with like Harry Lennox for years, so mm-hmm. I don't think it's fair to just accuse him of uh just because he doesn't like you mm-hmm. does not make him racist yeah uh, it, now does that mean his behavior wasn't shitty no it doesn't mean that his mm-hmm. behavior was likely still very shitty but those are important those are very very big allegations to th- lay against someone and to just do it like that uh i think is uh willy-nilly is mm-hmm. not necessarily the best way to go about it uh, i think it, you 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 do find you do find just saying hey this guy's a dick and he's unprofessional. Mm-hmm. You don't need to label, you know, don't, you don't need to drop more and more uh, titles on this dude mm-hmm. uh, just because um, he said this to someone who happens to look differently than him. Mm-hmm. He seems to be equal opportunity offender when it comes to treating people like shit, right? There was a time when you were just a dick, not necessarily some form of prejudice. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it says, while filming for the superhero movie, accusations that were supported by other stars of the movie, including Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, and Ben Affleck. Yes, we uh, understand that uh, Whedon definitely sucks. Uh, for almost two years since Fisher spoke out about the he- about the issues face- that he faced on set, Whedon has, he- has held his silence on the subject other than short comments made by a spokesman. But a lengthy interview covering his whole career allowed Whedon the opportunity to put his feelings across, and he, and he used it to refute almost every claim against him. Man, he just... He's not going to win in this one. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. just not going to win. 
Uh, so this is from the. A lot of these people are big like Snyderverse fans, uh, and that's a very, very, very passionate fan base. Yep. Um, after claiming that he reduced Fisher's role uh, in Justice League as the story quote didn't make sense and Fisher's acting was bad, fans rallied behind the actor, refuting everything Whedon said based on the fact that they have now seen Snyder's version of the movie with Fisher's expanded role to how the director intended. Based on this, many have said that there's nothing to back up anything Whedon stated in this interview. I actually agree with most of that. Mm -hmm. uh, his role in, uh, the exp in the Snyder Cut is far bigger and he does a far better job yep. uh, acting. He really is, in a lot of ways, the heart of that movie mm -hmm. and I think his acting is more than a, is more than serviceable. Uh, uh, he wor he works along with Joe Morton, uh, who plays uh, his dad. And yeah. Joe Morton is freaking incredible. Joe Morton is an incredible actor. Uh, so it, it's like I see what they're saying. Like what what he's saying here. Uh, I don't buy that he cut it because his acting was bad. I think he cut it because he just needed to make cut somewhere, yeah. and that just ha and it happens to be him and uh, Ezra Miller's Flash that he that he cut because most likely. Uh, Aquaman uh, was about to come out. Mm -hmm. Gadot had already had success with Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, and Ben Affleck is Ben Affleck. So you <laughs> keep those three uh, as the main ones and then Superman comes in later, right? Yeah. So I just think that they were just considered auxiliary characters that got cut. Mm -hmm. It was just cut by a dude who happens to treat him like shit. Yeah. Right? So I, I don't think there was any intent behind it other than that he's just an asshole who didn't make, uh, who butchered this movie down to an unintelligible hokey mess because the studio asked him to. Not because he want, not mm -hmm. because it's necessarily uh, that he wanted to ruin it, but the studio said, you need to make it shorter, you need to make it funnier. Mm -hmm. uh, so Fisher is clearly. <laughs> I feel so bad for all people involved here because I don't feel any of them come mm -hmm. off come off good. It says um, Whedon's article only increased support for Ray Fisher, Gal Gadot, and others. So I mean, this just goes on. It says while well, a retrospective piece that uh, like the one published in New York Magazine should have allowed Joss Whedon the opportunity to clear the air a little, the reluctance of the director to take full responsibility for any of the accusations of misconduct, choosing instead to divert blame away from his own actions, meant that the story has started to slink into the background. Uh, that has started to slink in the background has been put right into the public eye. You can't win in this situation. Yep. So say he takes the blame for everything that he did. Then he's uh, now they'll hold this against him literally forever. Yeah. There is no forgiveness to a lot of these people. Imagine like at least they didn't say it was a race thing. If they made it into a whole race thing, that would have been bad. The, well, I mean, they're just saying he's generally he was uh, sexist mm -hmm. and a jerk and a in an asshole and mm -hmm. he's sexist because what because he was mean to women and he's racist because he was mean to somebody who looked different than yeah. him but he was also mean to people who look like him mm -hmm. uh, so I just uh, I think the guy just sucks and mm -hmm. I think uh, and I think Ray Fisher is like he has every right to be angry I guess because I, I, I do believe that his cut that he got cut out of the movie but I don't think he's going about it in the right mm -hmm. way so I don't know I don't know I for me, I just never watched the Justice. Uh, you never saw the the Snyder Justice, cut. Yeah, well, yeah. no, I watched like clips here and there, but the Justice League movie, I was like, this is kind of long. The 2017 one was bad, mm -hmm. but the the cut was really good. So uh, it does make me wonder. Like, uh, I would love to see like what could have happened if they would allowed. Uh, uh, Zack Snyder's version to come out first mm -hmm. uh, maybe all of this doesn't come out and Ray Fisher's getting more roles now yeah. because whether they like it or not just by calling people out like this executives aren't going to want to hire you right mm -hmm. so um, I don't know man it's uh, I feel I feel bad for <laughs> all for, not for the parties but I, I, I feel like it's just uh, it's bad all around right yeah for sure what is Brett searching up now uh, I just want to see more of the and also the actor that I was looking at, um, looking about casting for Red Hood. Sorry, I'm still on that topic. Go ahead. Um, Louis Tang. Louis Tang? Okay. Yeah, him or the guy that was his co-star in um, Mortal Kombat, Daniel Neeson. Okay. That's the guy who played Cole? Yeah. That's the guy who played Cole? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those two would be really good looking Red Hoods. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that could work. Yeah. I don't know. They're yeah. two big guys. Like, um, yeah. Lewis is like 6'2", and then Daniel is... Why did I call it it? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's no information about him, how tall he is. 
Oh, wait. Yeah, same height. Six yeah. two. So back to the I just mm-hmm. uh, one thing that's crazy about this is like so much has happened between cast from I saw Elijah Dushku came out in support of Charisma Carpenter mm-hmm. ga- against uh, Joss Whedon. There's yeah. so many allegations being thrown around from so many people that it's kind of that all of this started basically over the Ray Fisher uh, mm-hmm. situation and they had the whole uh, basically what happened is like WB investigated mm-hmm. uh, what happened with uh, the between him and Joss Whedon and mm-hmm. J- and uh, so WB investigates their own studio and their own director and they're like we have found that we have done nothing wrong yeah uh, as you would expect and that was uh, earlier in the that, that was that was in 2020 mm-hmm. just think about that that Ew. was in 2020 That's this has been bad. going on it's 2022 now mm-hmm. this has been going on for that long like I'm waiting for this to die mm-hmm. and be over with I don't think they're going to be done with it it's going to keep going well, but it keeps them uh, it keeps them relevant right mm-hmm. like they get to I mean I don't think Whedon wants it I think Whedon's like he's made his money he like he would rather be because uh, he got moved from another project uh, mm-hmm. last year he was doing something uh, with like uh, for like HBO um, mm-hmm. and he had to leave the project because all this stuff was coming out and they're like we can't we can't work with you yep. right now so I don't know. It's just, uh, I have a feeling that we're going to end up seeing more of this, even if, even if it's awful. So, uh, yeah, it's basically Fisher took the day off on Martin Luther King Day and then like went right back at it. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, uh, well, uh, do you want to, like, okay, let me ask you this question. Is it something you even want to keep covering or should we just leave it here? We should leave it because we both know that Josh Whedon is... Josh like- Whedon. My bad. Josh is not. You Josh. know what? He's already snobby with a weird name. He's like Willem. Willem Defoe. Well, Josh Whedon. Willem, you can actually pronounce it. Yes. Josh just sounds like toss. So toss it in the trash can. Yep. We're done. It's 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 funny too because it's uh, it proves to you that uh, Whedon's cr- like the dude who created like Buffy the Vampire Slayer mm-hmm. and literally was one of the pioneers of making geek culture like very very mainstream Mm -hmm. to the you know to varying degrees of happiness of people like a lot of people hate the fact that this stuff is as mainstream now as Mm -hmm. as it is so well did you actually watch buffy the vampire slayer i did uh but i was a bigger i was a bigger fan of dollhouse i didn't watch angel okay i never saw angel um I never watched Dollhouse. I watched a little bit of There's only two seasons. Uh, it was uh, it, a show about the imprinting of human consciousness onto blank slate people. Well, I saw the summary of it, but I just never watched it. Very, very good. Again, Harry Lennox, uh, very good actor. Eliza mm-hmm. Dushku, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, well, for me, I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer because yeah. it was based on the movie that was turned into a book that was turned into a TV show series. Nope. The- I like the series, but... Um, well, because I like the actress who plays um, Buffy. She also played Daphne in the Scooby Doo movies. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, she's really cool. Like, if you follow her Instagram um, posts, like she talks about meditation, and how to self better yourself, and how self better yourself. I can't word. It's like okay. something's happening to me. It's a Wednesday for us, technically. What does that mean? I don't know. It's a, it's, it's it's a Wednesday, therefore I can't talk. Shouldn't that be like the middle of the <laughs> week when you're like in the groove? No, no. All right. No, I like hit a bumper and my brain said no. All right. (laughs) Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.